This is the plaintiff, Mark. He says he owns one of the largest dueling piano companies in the country and was hired by the defendant to bring his act to his venue once a month. The contract states that dates are guaranteed and can't be canceled. For the show in May, the defendant told him there were not many reservations for the night and the bar wasn't going to be busy. Then the next day, he said, the weather was going to be bad and told him he was canceling the night and just to bill him. The defendant never paid him. He's owed $1,100 and is suing for just that today. This is the defendant, Rob. He says the plaintiff's contract expired at the end of April, but he booked him for a May date and agreed to do it without signing a contract. Unfortunately, the weather was very bad in May, and since it was pouring down rain, he told him not to come that night and that he would make it up to him in the summer when the place was packed. Since they had no contract, he feels he doesn't owe the plaintiff for the canceled date. And he feels the judge will agree. He's accused of hitting a sour note. All parties, please get your right hand. The litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Okay, Mark, you've asked to be referred to only by your first name? Yes. Uh, you are suing Rob? Okay, let's get this straight. You own a company that does what? Uh, I own a dueling pianos company. We provide rock and roll live entertainment for bars and restaurants all throughout the Do country. Do you actually play? I am not just the president. I'm also a performer, yes. <laughs> and then there's another. So you you bring in two pianos. We bring in two keyboards or pianos, two of our roster of over 30 different performers. We do a three-hour nonstop show that's all request from Billy Joel to Bon Jovi, Britney Spears, Bruno Mars, Snoop okay. Dogg, ACDC. We, people sing, they drink, they dance. It's three hours straight every night. Oh, God. God, I love it. All right, now. So do we. You, you, what is your job? I'm the general manager of the park, Tap and um, Grill. Okay. Now, you have done business with him many, many times at different yeah. venues, right? Yes, probably four or five different venues over eight years. Okay. And so you hire him to do work at this venue? Yes. And you enter into a written contract? Yes, yes. ma'am. Does anybody have a copy of that written contract? I do. Okay. And that written contract covers three months of performances one time a week, was it? One time a month. Uh, four, four months, one time per month. Okay, is that correct? Yes. Okay, four times once a month. And how was it going when he would come in? Not great. Not great. And is that, was that, do you think, their fault? No, because you keep hiring them. Do you think it was just wasn't working out, wasn't what that audience wanted, wasn't? In, in this line, you have to give it a few, a few times to build momentum. You know, you, um, you know, you never hit a home run right out of the park, usually the first time. Okay. You know, but, you know, you build that repetition of always building up, building up, and then it just wasn't building. Okay. So what happens is you perform in the four months of the contract, which are? January through April. And what happens? Uh, at the end of the four-month term, we uh, checked back with Rob if he wanted to do another date. He had told us verbally he wanted to add a show for May. We emailed him as per paragraph seven there in the contract, a uh, request for written confirmation, which I also have, which he and, agreed and to. And he confirmed he by did email in writing, that, which I have yes, here. he wanted you to come yes, in May. that he wanted to do the Thurs uh, th on one more Thursday in May. So we had that written confirmation, Let which- Let me see that, please. Okay which then comports that date to the rest of the contract. What happened terms. in May? Uh, the day of the show, we got a message that morning uh, that he said, and I'm quoting, we won't have anyone there to justify having the show. Um, and canceled the what? show. Because it was raining? Uh, he said, the weather is supposed to be bad all day. Uh, I don't see the point of the show tonight. And then he went on to say, cancel the show and you can bill me. Okay, let me see that one. Highlighted in blue. And again, uh, as the defendant stated, we've done business together for many years in many different venues. He was well acquainted with our practices and our policies. So what happened? Um, like you said, the show wasn't going well and the weather was horrible that week. And this, we were checking the weather back and forth, not just that day of, but there was been correspondence prior to that. Um, and I believe I, uh, I pulled a report from the weather from Linden Airport, which is about 20 miles away. We had a half inch of rain coming down of the night of the show. And then um, I also would like to submit some of the, 
the actual revenue I don't that care we brought in. hailing the night of the show. Yeah. The question is, do you have to pay them? That's the question. So what happened? If I was a, I saw your email. You're you're here as a representative for yes. the for the grill that was hiring him, yes. right? Okay, and that's who you're suing. You're suing. So my question is, why shouldn't they have to pay him if you cancel it that day? Tell me that. Uh, if we were to, if we were to end up paying them. You know, and I would have made him come down, drive an hour, come down, set up, sit in the corner and play for three hours by himself. You know, it was a mutual thing where he didn't have to come down and play for himself uh, and travel back and forth. Right. Uh, but while, we do know when you guys had a written contract for those yes. prior months in that written contract, it specifically said that all performance dates uh, are listed above are guaranteed to occur and cannot be canceled by the purchaser for any reason. And furthermore, it says all future performance dates, which this is a future performance date, the one we're talking about, once confirmed in writing, which it was because you sent an email confirming it, are guaranteed to occur and cannot be canceled for any reason since they are subject to the terms of this agreement. And the terms of this agreement are pay me. If you want to cancel, you got to pay me. Where does it become mutual? He's already hired two people. Yeah. He's planning to go and you're making him lose $800. Why? How is that mutual? Ah, oh, yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll tell you what. I don't have to go and you don't have to pay me. How is that helpful to him? <laughs> he can't get, book a gig that night. So how is that fair? And welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. Okay, I have a question for you. So this plaintiff owns a company called Dueling Pianos. And what it is is, it is uh, two pianos on a stage and there are two piano players and the audience fires out requests, okay? And you wanna see who's gonna win the competition, who's better. Sounds kinda like fun. So if you're screaming out the requests, what song do you request? Think about that for a great piano type song. This should be kind of obvious if you think about the words piano. What do you say? The Piano Man. Yes, very good. Okay, that's good. What else? There's another one. What do you say? I was going to say The Piano Man, but he's turning 50 today. Wow, happy birthday. Thank you. You're old. <laughs> yes, I am. Congratulations. <laughs> um, what do you say? Furry Least is the only one I know. Furry Least. Who are the... The big, think about it, who are the big piano players on stage? Huh? Billy Joel and Elton John. See, he is old. See, 50 actually <laughs> works down here. Good job going inside the courtroom. Apparently, they're pretty sought after, right? Because he's got all these people on retainer. Well, I guess not retainer, but he's got a, p a potential list of a lot of people. You've hired him a bunch of times. Well, don't worry about it. We'll hire you some other time. That's his answer instead of $800. What would you rather have, $800 in your pocket or somebody promising to hire you some other day where they might do the same thing to you? Well, at the same time, I'd rather not lose the money of him coming down, spending the money, and not having people there to for him to perform for. Yeah, but if you wanted things, yeah. see, here's the thing. You don't have a contract for May. I know that. Yes. And I know that's one of the things you said in your answer to the complaint. Well, for this one, there was no contract, so why should he get paid for it? Because you do have a contract for May. It's just not written. Your contract for May, okay, you got to stop bobbleheading. You're annoying me. <laughs> okay, the contract for May is oral. There's such a thing as an oral contract. And it's, it's, I know it happened because you agree it happened. And then you breach the contract by saying, don't come. And then he's supposed to just eat it and not get paid. Why would I think that the terms of the, con the verbal contract between you guys, the understanding between the parties, was anything other than it had been for the last four months? You know, especially when you send an email back saying, bill me. Bill me, where I come from, means bill me. It doesn't mean, oh, I saved you a trip, so you're going to eat this whole. What happened, really? What happened, really? Did the owner not want to pay? No, you know, it just. You can't know, hold we, up. Can't. Uh, are you still the manager there? Yes. OK, so you're not going to tell me what really happened. What really happened, because I'm sure you felt he should get paid. So the owner who left you holding the bag here today is the one who didn't want to pay him. Uh, did you argue for him at least? Did you tell him how? No, we have discussions. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, what's this other $300 money owed for late fees and court costs? What's uh, that? Well, we have uh, agreements with our performers the same as we do with venues, and the performers are supposed to be getting paid by right. within also, seven days. Right, also the performers days. show up that day and work, and then they're right. standing they there after working. Right, they have and, and right. car yeah, yeah, payments, yeah. and so they expect a prompt payment from me, as I do from my bar clients. Mm -hmm. So my, I... If I don't pay them within seven days, I'm obligated to pay so them. So did you pay them or did you tell oh, them to uh, yeah, wait? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, my word is my, it's all I have. So in this contract, what it says is if you don't pay us the evening of said performance, which of course isn't, 
That's not the situation we have here right. because there wasn't a performance. Right. It's within All seven right. days. All right. Um, and you're saying it's within seven days because here it says there'll be a 200 additional charge plus an additional $100 per week of said payment or any part thereof that's un so every seven days you're tacking on another $100? Well, we, we put that in there just to promote prompt payment. We, right. We've never, otherwise we'd be seeking a massive amount of money because we're waiting much more than two or three weeks here to get paid. I'm not asking for that. I'm asking for what's reasonable since my guys have been waiting to get paid. Well, um, your guys haven't well, been well, waiting, waiting to get paid. To get paid. You're paid. Stop, well, stop talking right. to me about those poor guys. Right. It's you, I'm you want to get paid. Well, All right. I guess my so guys why would do you my get, kids um, Why do you get the other 300? Because um, you've had to wait. Why don't you just get prejudgment statutory interest from the date that it should have been paid to you? Within reason, there is standard practice for allowing a, a, a one-time late fee, which we've had Done in. Yeah, I'm not going to allow it a $300 okay. late fee. I am going to order them to pay you the $800. And do, would you guys like your your the guys who would actually play play would also get tips that night when they oh, play? Oh yes. Oh yes. How, what kind of t how generous are people? Uh, extremely. But it doesn't it depend on the bar and the people? It there's some. How generous had these this this venue at been? This bar uh, the players averaged between one and two hundred dollars each per show. Wow, that's really good. What's the name of that chain? I used to do this. I used um, to. Howl at the moon. That's it. It's been plaguing me this whole time. Is and that there chain you've still plugged open? My competitor. There Is that, you go. That's your competitor. One of yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm going to order them to pay you the 800. I'm going to. What was the night that this was supposed to happen? May, May what? 17th. So as of, May, I'm going to order them to pay you whatever the statutory prejudgment interest is since May 17th. Um, Actually, since a week after May 17th, because I think that would have been acceptable. And, of course, your court costs in coming to court, because it shouldn't cost yes. you a penny to have to come and chase Thank you. Um, the money. That is my verdict. Good luck, folks. Thank you. Thank you. So the plaintiff prevails. He will get $800 plus some accrued interest. Uh, it's not exactly what he was seeking. I have a feeling you're not shocked that, that he won this case. Am I? Not overly shocked, but... You know, it, you know, it's a worthy battle. The, the judge kind of feels you were kind of pushed into this by the owners of the bar, is that right? Pretty much, you know. I, I'm a representative of the bar, so, you know, I'm doing what I'm told. Do what you're told. Yes. Will you ever book him again? Um, possibly, you know, if, you know, the position's right and, you know, there's actually a following for him to come out for it. I mean, he, he makes it sound like it, it really, it does a good show, but you, you were kind of lukewarm on it. What? Um, at some locations, they've done a great show. Yeah. At this present location and our location in Atlantic City, they haven't. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Okay. Thank very good. Okay. Mark, if you'll step out here. I must have sounded like you do a great job. I mean, um, uh, well, we do over 500 shows a year. If we're not doing a good job, then something's out of whack. Yeah, so our it. customers are pretty happy, yes. Okay. Well, good. You, you happy with the results? I am. I am. I think justice was served. Good enough. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Harvey? Okay, you know, Doug, in, in court, damages have to be precise, except small claims court, the judge is allowed to fudge a little bit to do justice. That's why the plaintiff got the tips.